Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And I hope you've had an awesome day now. It's 2 a.m. here in the morning in Melbourne, Australia. But I just had to put this video together and I really wanted to explain to you exactly how important this is because I think it sounds like a small thing, but it's actually a really, really big thing. There's so many different angles to this. I wanted to capture all of those angles in this video so you could fully understand just what Tesla has achieved here. It's so significant. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, thank you for subscribing. There's been a huge increase in subscribers lately. And I think for good reason. The reason is I'm planning on making three to five videos per day. And the reason for that is, well, let's be honest, there's probably maybe 300 news articles per day in the EV sector, in clean energy. And truly, I'm not doing it justice by only making a few, one or two, maybe three videos per day. So I'm trying to increase that so that you can get a greater understanding of what's really going on. And of course, I think that's important for you to be able to assess your decisions. What car should you buy? Should you get solar? Should you get battery storage? Should you invest in this company? Should you invest in that company? So my aim really is to further this industry. So if you're able to help me do that by subscribing to the channel or donating on my Patreon account, I would be very, very grateful. Now, way too much coverage is given to Tesla stock and its CEO, Elon Musk. Things like this are just way, way, way more interesting. I'll tell you why. Wait till the end of the video when I fully explain what is really going on here. Now, I want to give a shout out here to Electric for doing some really good research work on this. Some of this video is based on report on their website. Now, remember when Sandy Munro tore down the first Tesla Model 3, and he said that Tesla did fine on the new electronic stuff, such as the motors, where they're well ahead of everyone else, but wasn't even close to the standard automotive bodybuilding that the major OEMs excelled at. Do you remember that? You probably know about that. If you don't, yeah, well, it wasn't good. Now, four years later, and Tesla has moved on from the old stamping and welding methods to giga castings, faster, cheaper, more accurate, and lighter. Every OEM auto manufacturer in the world is now playing catch up in this area. That is not fanboyism. That is not drinking the Kool-Aid. That is simply a fact. Now, Sandy Munro's verdict on the Tesla body back then was, he said, the strategy for the body is about as bad as it could be. It's heavy and much more expensive than even the carbon fiber BMW i3, which obviously he thought was a basically a bolt of shit. A bag of shit, which it still is. But anyway, Tesla has come a long way since then. And obviously, Sandy Munro has turned into a big follower of the company, a big advocate for the company. Some people say he's uh, an unbiased advocate for the company, when realistically, actually, he isn't unbiased. He's pretty impartial because he writes reports on cars for the automotive industry. He has to be unbiased, otherwise, they won't buy his reports. And by the way, he sold his Tesla stock a long time ago, so he has no incentive whatsoever. Tesla pays him nothing. Tesla doesn't pay anyone to do any marketing for the company at all. That's basically a rule. You don't know about that? Well, that's a fact. Now, in auto manufacturing first, this is the first time this has ever happened, Tesla has started building Model Y bodies with two giant single casting pieces for the front and back of the electric SUV. Now, I remember when Sandy Munro said that there was a part of one of these castings which in the initial original Model 3, Tesla had used 70 pieces when Munro thought that they could have potentially used a lot less pieces. So they were going through all this work and effort to weld and stamp and join all these pieces together and it made the car heavier. Well, all of a sudden they've gone from kind of maybe near industry worst, maybe not the worst, but close to the worst to without question the best in this area. So to give you some context, Tesla has been preparing to start production of the Model Y at Two, two new factories, Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas. And these factories will absolutely change the game, particularly Berlin, because this will mean that in Europe, it'll be much cheaper for people to buy a Model Y or a Model 3. And of course, Tesla won't have to ship them from China or from the United States. It's going to be heaps better for customers and heaps better for Tesla. Now, Elon Musk has been hyping 
the new Model Y to be built at those factories as a revolution in auto body engineering. He was, he was referring to Tesla using mega casting parts to have single body pieces for the rear and front of the electric SUV. Now, the reason this hasn't been done by any manufacturer in the past is because there wasn't in that size and actually make the castings work. But Tesla, in conjunction with SpaceX, developed a new metallurgy, a new metal to use for these castings so that they would work. So over the last few years, they've been heavily investing in casting and alloy technology to enable larger casted parts that have the capacity to greatly simplify manufacturing. The company even acquired several units of the biggest casting machines that have been ever made in the world for cars. So Tesla has been producing the Model Y with a single rear body piece that replaced those 70 parts I spoke of before in the vehicle. Earlier this year, a picture of the first single front casting part of the Model Y produced at Gigafactory Texas was leaked on the internet. A few months later, Tesla confirmed that it is now producing the Model Y body with those two parts. So probably, let's say between 100 to 140 parts have been replaced by two. That's a huge advantage. Now, in a picture released in its Q2 2021 financial result, the Model Y body production line shows new bodies going down the, through the line, featuring both a single piece front and rear casting parts. And this is a first in auto manufacturing, and it will change the game. A source familiar with Tesla's body engineering listed some of the many benefits of such a design. And I've added a few here, right? You save on factory space. Elon is Big on saving on factory space. CapEx, you eliminate hundreds of welding robots and stamping machines. Better NVH, so a lot of noise can be eliminated. A lot of road noise, which is a main contributor to noise. You make the car lighter. Now the lighter part here is huge because apparently this will actually save 440 pounds of weight per car. That is enormous and that will lead to an enormous increase in efficiency Tesla is already the clear market leader in efficiency in terms of the actual kilometers, the actual range you get out of the battery pack size. This is going to further increase that lead significantly because 440 pounds is massive. That's, that's more than 200 kilos. So, like I said, increase range. This will make manufacturing simpler by reducing the number of stamping and welding, savings from eliminating tooling and maintenance costs of welding and stamping, vertical integration, better supply chain control. They don't need to buy all those different parts and so many other benefits, including it removes bots and the needed supply chain to the bots not needed. I sort of mentioned that already. Better consistencies for panel gaps, improved body rigidity, better performance and handling because of less weight and improved body rigidity. Now, to give you some context on those 440 pounds, Tesla claims the new Model Y will be 10% lighter as a result. That is incredible. Now, I'm not sure if they're saying it's 10% lighter just from this, it might be 10% lighter thanks to this and some other manufacturing processes that they haven't told us about. Now, Tesla wants to go a step further than this by joining these two parts with a structural battery pack powered by its new 4680 battery cells unveiled last year. I don't know if this will happen in the first cars released from Gigafactory Berlin or Texas, but it will happen at some point in the future. And Tesla has been guiding a start of production at Gigafactory Texas and Berlin by the end of this year. All reports suggest that will happen. Now, this is really an incredible achievement. Tesla haters are quick to say any other automaker can do it and that they simply don't because blah, 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 blah. Truth is, they're not doing it because they, why? I don't know. It's better, way better, and they're not doing it. That's a fact. Let's leave it at that. Now, casting large parts is hard. Tesla didn't just order the biggest casting machines in the world to achieve this. Like I said, Tesla and SpaceX developed a custom alloy to make these large casted parts possible. And that is why this is so significant. Now, I wanna move on to what is the most important part of this entire equation here and why I think, I hope you've stayed on to listen to this, gross margins. If you don't know gross margins in the auto industry, well, you should. Currently, Tesla has the highest gross margins in the world per vehicle sold, except for cars like Ferrari, right? The average gross margin in the auto industry is eight to 10% across the entire auto industry. Now, Tesla has always had impressive gross margins for its cars, 
one of the most recent reports of an impressive gross margin, which fuels Tesla's profitability and ability to reinvest that money into new factories, new technology, new batteries, etc., was in January when Guasin Securities analyzed the Model Y. The study broke down the total gross margin and revealed it was 29.4%, around three times the industry average of 8 to 10% for luxury cars. Now, this wasn't just one report. Numerous reports have declared Tesla's gross automotive margins are in this range between 28 to 30 percent. That is staggering. And this will mean that Tesla can potentially reduce the cost of their car significantly and still make a profit. So once Tesla's actual supply increases and starts to come closer to meeting demand, Tesla will be able to reduce the cost of their vehicles by significant amount, by a significant amount, and still continue to operate with high profit margin. Now, in another report, according to Shenzhen, China-based financial firm, the Tesla's China Model Y cost 237,930 yen or 36,800 US dollars to produce. However, its selling point gives Tesla a 29.4% gross margin with a price of US 52,600 US dollars. Now, put this in context, that vehicle there doesn't use the stamping part, the front casting, and it doesn't use a structural battery pack. So when we join all these three pieces together, the rear casting, the front casting, and the structural battery pack, and Tesla begins using more lithium ion phosphate cells in their batteries that are going to be provided by CATL's new factory down the road in Shanghai, those costs will be reduced again even more so. Now, as many of you know, the biggest issue with BEVs, with electric vehicles right now, is upfront cost, especially those made in the West. Not so much in China, where the prices there are, well, on par with ICE and sometimes cheaper, but certainly in the West. And this attacks that problem directly. The mega casts are faster and cheaper to make. And for all the reasons I've listed, they reduce the cost and provide many benefits. So all in all, this is a true game changer based on all the reasons I have mentioned, but more than anything else on money and time saved. So what are the cons? Are there any cons to this? Well, the haters are saying there are, oh, maybe I should say people who are asking fair questions are saying they are, because this is a fair question. What happens if you crack the piece in a crash? Is it replaceable? Maybe it doesn't matter though, as Tesla doesn't want you to repair their products post-crash anyway. There is a bit of that image. And there's a huge market for Tesla drivetrains and battery modules from wrecked cars. So as long as you're okay with that, I think it's a big of a wait and see. Because let's be honest, if your car is insured, who cares? Does it matter? Does it matter if your car's a write-off because your insurer says it is? I don't think it does. However, the only thing is, I would say, is if you get in a crash severe enough to damage the underbody cast. I don't know if it matters if the cast is one piece or many stamped and welded pieces. It's more than likely going to be a totaled vehicle. The most important thing, in my view, is occupant safety. This will improve occupant safety by being more structurally rigid and by making the car lighter. And remember, Tesla's vehicles are, objectively, the safest in the world by measures from the Australian testing, European testing, American testing. They are the safest. That is a big selling point. Now, Sandy Munro, who laughed and criticized the build quality and gaps in his first Tesla teardown, today can't wait for his Cybertruck. I watched a recent video where he said that that was the car he is waiting for. And I can't wait for his next teardown of the Tesla Model Y and of the coming Cybertruck. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.